Beneath the streets, hidden in the infinite darkness, there is a mutant predator you definitely do not want to cross paths with. This is the story of the original Leatherhead. Leatherhead was created by Ryan Brown in 1988 when he was living in the city of East Hampton in a basement room that, according to legend, was swampy enough to have fungi growing on the walls and it was located across the inspiration for the abandoned Rat King factory. Being another Utrom accident, Leatherhead means moment of cognizance, birth of understanding in the Utrom language. At the time, there seemed to be many inspirations for this character, like Dr. Connors from Spider-Man. But it is hard to ignore the obvious urban legends about alligators in the New York sewers. Previous to the creation of Leatherhead, the urban legend led to the film Alligator in 1980, which was centered around the idea of a baby alligator being flushed down a toilet and then slowly mutating in the sewers after eating dead animals that were experimented on with growth hormones in an attempt to make cattle bigger, this made the alligator super extra sized and super hungry. The legend started after an interview to a man that claimed to be a sewer commissioner in the 1930s, who was involved in a campaign to clean all the alligators out of the sewer system. But further investigation on this interview revealed that this man was never a sewer commissioner in the first place. There is also the hard fact that an alligator wouldn't be able to live in the sewers for long but more about that later. Let's dive into the origin of Leatherhead. The earliest chronological story we have of Leatherhead was named Threads, which was printed in Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 2 Number 50, believe it or not. This story was conceived around the time Ryan Brown was working in Tales Volume 1. In it, we learned that Leatherhead was originally a baby alligator living in an apartment until one day, his owners, who were most likely criminals, were attacked by a gang. The confrontation ended in complete tragedy, with Baby Leatherhead being the only survivor. He started exploring outside of the apartment building and ended up falling into the sewers. There he survived by eating rats and whatever he could find. But he would be eventually found by two TCRI employees, one of them being Xanos, the Utrom character we would later know as Dr. X. Leatherhead would be taken to TCRI and there, he would be mutated by accident in the same way the turtles were mutated. It was against the Utrom's beliefs to tamper with life forms, so they decided to let him stay with them and leave as an unofficial Utrom. Leatherhead's owner, Dr. X, would be impressed by how intelligent Leatherhead would get, despite being a civilized mutant. He couldn't stay away from the sewers for long, and he would often go on sewer explorations. The next story with Leatherhead took place during a time when the Turtles were still very young in Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 2 Number 38. In this story, the Turtles disobeyed Splinter by going into forbidden territory following their remote pirate boat. Unbeknown to them, four aliens transported to this area, looking for the Utroms. After finding their toy boat, the Turtles saw a massive alligator swimming nearby, Raphael being Raphael started throwing rocks at him until Leatherhead got tired and stood up. The turtles ran away from him, and they were lucky enough that the four aliens were in the way. Filled with rage, Leatherhead disposed of the aliens, immediately regretting it. It seemed like reptilian rage sometimes took over him, replacing common sense. Dr. X then found him and calmed him down by letting him know that the aliens were Signorethites, age-old enemies of the Utroms. They were probably testing the perimeters of their defenses. Years later, the Turtles would meet the Utroms and help them escape Earth after blowing their cover. Leatherhead was not present in the building when the Utroms returned to their homeworld, so he had to go back to living in the sewers. This takes us to his actual first appearance in Tales of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1 Number 6 by Ryan Brown, Jim Lawson, and Steve Levine. In this story, we learned about a big game hunter known as Mr. Marlin, who had his eyes set on hunting the fabled large alligator living in the sewers of New York. We would also meet Officer Emil Tendaji, who was tracking Marlin for his indiscriminate hunt of exotic and endangered species. Marlin and a few of his men would cross paths with the turtles, who were in the sewers chasing some foot soldiers. Trapped between the foot and Marlin, the turtles found a secret passageway into a hidden live-in lab. 
Marlin got in and found the perfect opportunity to hunt the turtles, who were four of a kind, but he would later be surprised by Leatherhead. The shock of seeing a huge bipedal talking alligator was too much for him and he fainted. This is when Leatherhead explained to the turtles how he was adopted and mutated by the Utroms. But one day, the Utroms were gone and their building destroyed. He realized that the Utroms probably returned home in a hurry, and with him not being around, they got separated. Since then, Leatherhead lived in the sewers, working on a deep space communicator to make contact with the Utroms so they could return for him. Marlin then surprised them again, chasing them to a stone bridge above a river chasm. Leatherhead would smash the bridge with his tail, separating themselves from Marlin. But Marlin still had his rifle, and when he was about to shoot, a knife severed the tendon that operated his trigger finger. The knife was thrown by Emmo. Scared of the idea of being caged like an animal, Marlin tripped and fell into the chasm. With his lab exposed, Leatherhead needed a new home, so the turtles offered him their former lair. Leatherhead moved there and started working on creating a new transmat device. Originally, Leatherhead was supposed to fall to his death with Marlin, but Peter Laird rejected the idea in favor of letting Leatherhead leave. Years later, in 1992, Leatherhead would return in a story written by Dan Berger. The story took place before the events of City at War, around the time the Foot Ninjas were searching for a new sensei to lead them. Four Foot Ninja escaped the turtles by hiding in the sewers and trespassing on the former turtle lair. There they were surprised by Leatherhead and pleaded for their life and his leadership. Previous to this story, Leatherhead had a confrontation with other Foot members and lost his left eye, but he then saw this as an opportunity to get help on finishing his transmat device. The Foot Ninja helped him, but were secretly conspiring to making it fail so he could become their new strong sensei. The Turtles then proceeded to go visit Leatherhead to check on him and found the Foot Ninja instead. Leatherhead interrupted them just in time and all of them got together to help him finish the device. Thanks to the Foot Ninja, the device failed and Leatherhead's reptilian rage erupted, blaming everybody involved. He swore revenge and then ran away into the sewer system. TMNT Volume 1 and 2 would end, and Ryan Brown would eventually talk to Gary Carlson, who was going to be writing the Image Comics TMNT Volume 3. In these conversations, Carlson would learn about Ryan's ideas for Dr. X, and he eventually wrote the character into continuity. With Volume 3 becoming non-canonical, the character had to be reintroduced in the pages of Tales of the TMNT Volume 2. If you are interested in what happened during Volume 3, you can check that video in this channel. And speaking of Tales, in Volume 2 Number 8 in February 2005, we would get a follow-up story for Leatherhead. In this story, the Turtles would discover an odd electromagnetic signal periodically being broadcasted from the deep sewers and would proceed to investigate it. The Turtles would discover that it was Leatherhead who caused those by trying to make his transmat device work. The mutant alligator has become even bigger and his left eye was healed. But despite these improvements, he started experiencing strange and long blackouts, with full days of his life missing completely. This was also making his reptilian rage a little more intense. Then three Utroms activated the transmat remotely, took Leatherhead forcefully, and then prepared the machine to be blown away after their departure. The story would be continued in Tales number 23 in May 2006. In this one, the Turtles would be contacted by a Utrom known as Emissary Ribke, an obvious anagram for Kirby, who, unbeknown to them, was the one driving the TCRI truck in the incident that mutated them. He recruited the Turtles to rescue Leatherhead from the tentacles of the Illuminated, a religious Utrom rogue group that wanted to cleanse the universe of violent species. In this case, their plans involved cloning Leatherhead to create an army of obedient mutants that could, for example, erase the Triceratone race. We would learn then that the Illuminated were behind Leatherhead's further mutation and blackouts. This mutation enhanced his healing factor, curing his left eye. The Turtles went into space to rescue Leatherhead and fight his clones. Ripke sacrificed himself to put an end to the space base, which was plagued with all the clones. Leatherhead, after seeing this dark side of the Utroms, suddenly stopped seeing them as better than humans and decided to be sent back to Earth, to the sewers. You can learn more about the Utroms in this other video in this channel. His next appearances would be in a story taking place in issues number 50 and number 63 in 2008 and 2009. 
In this story, Leatherhead would be kidnapped with other cryptids and sent to an island near Australia in some kind of battle royale that would be broadcasted through the dark web. With people placing bets throughout the world, one of the hunters in this game would be Mr. Marlin, who lost an arm and a leg after his last appearance. The turtles would figure out the location and would get themselves into the game to rescue him and the other cryptids. In a confrontation between Leatherhead and Marlin, the hunter would seem to get devoured by other monsters. The turtles and Leatherhead would eventually be rescued by Agent Emil, who then revealed to have been working for an organization that protected rare species from monsters like Jack Marlin. But Marlin survived and took down the helicopter with the turtles in it. After surviving the crash, Leatherhead helped Emil arrest Marlin, but they were soon under attack by an engineered creature made by the organizers of the game. Marlin escaped again in a boat, but was eventually eaten by a sea creature, and that was probably the end of him. The Turtles and Leatherhead barely survived the battle but were released back to freedom. This takes us to the last appearances of the character. In TMNT Volume 4, Leatherhead was shown attending Splinter's funeral, and then he got into a fight against Raphael during a period when he was mutated into a monster, which is probably a story for another day. Not much happened with Leatherhead in these stories, but whatever his fate was, he was apparently happy living in the sewers of New York. He may or may not have left Earth with the Utroms in the far future, according to the possible future timeline where humanity left the planet with the Utroms. Going back to the urban legend, I mentioned before that alligators would never be able to survive in the sewers for long. That has to do with the low temperatures of the sewers during the winter. Since they are cold-blooded, they wouldn't be able to survive without sources of heat or sunlight. Leatherhead, on the other hand, is a mutant alligator. His physiology could be advanced enough to at least make him able to find sources of heat. But this is where things get tricky. The turtles are also cold-blooded, yet they live as if they were hot-blooded. So how do these characters survive in the sewers? Well, we can always justify it by saying they are mutants, or we could justify it with gigantothermy, a phenomenon where large ectothermic animals are more easily able to maintain a constant high body temperature than smaller animals. Large turtles are an example of this. Do you think this principle applies to the turtles and Leatherhead? Leave your thoughts in the comments. One thing is for sure, Leatherhead really loved living in the sewers, unlike other versions of this character that will be explored in this channel. Thanks for watching.